So this is Ken from PCM Theater. Tonight we're talking about the one act Grounded from 2019. Uh, and here we're here with Paul Mayatovich, who played Len. And we have Nicole Russano, who played his wife, Chris. And the director for the piece, Tim Moran, is also with us. Um, so just as kind of a little bit of a background, um, the story of Grounded is kind of a classic role reversal. Uh, the parents are coming home late at night, early the next morning from a uh, evening of partying and frolicking and, and whatever. And uh, their two teenage children are um, essentially catch them coming in late and the kids act like the parents while the parents are acting like kids. Um, and it kind of asked, you know, of you, Nikki, and you, Paul, to, to act a little differently than you've been asked to act on stage, <laughs> um, where you're kind of channeling that inner teenager. I noticed early on, Paul, there's this moment where you're kind of discouraged and you kind of kick at the ground, like a Luke Skywalker kick in the sand kind of thing. So maybe talk a little bit about, you know, channeling that inner teenager, the body language, the facial expressions, even the sound of your voice when you're delivering some of the lines once you've been caught being out all night. That's really funny because I don't know how much channeling there was compared to me just being me. All I could think about almost that entire time is I am, I am this immature. I'm like, Nikki and I are more immature as actors, not just the people playing in this show. We are just immature. And I mean, as, as far as the, you have to know a little bit more about me. I'm, if there's the, the door is open even in the slightest and there's a little light there for me to milk it for something funny, I will. And you're right, Todd's got all the best lines and timed out perfectly so they have greater impact. And I don't have the funniest lines. I'm just a goofy dad um, who's immature, maybe slightly drunk, coming home late. So... I really, I had to do it with my facial expressions, with how I was standing, how I was talking. And any time that I could do that, I, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to, my son is 15 years old. He stands like that. He voices things and phrases things those ways. He's got that tone, regardless of what he's saying. And, and I tried to do it not to that degree, because that just would have been too fake, but an adult being like right on the edge of being that person because he's a little drunk, it's a little late, he's tired, and he's just, you know, annoyed at being trapped. It's, we were having the greatest night of our lives and it just got cut off, <laughs> like right at that second. And now all of a sudden we have to, we're parents and we're stuck. And, and, and that's where it comes out for me, the comedy. And what was going on in the driveway? Driveway. Oh, that was a post-drive inspection. Yep. Vehicle <laughs> inspection. You see, test. It's always best after a trip to walk over. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Watching from your bedroom window? You woke me up. The screeching tires, the occasional horn. You parents and your damn rock and roll music. <laughs> 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 Nikki, as we've alluded to, you know, Chris King gets all the best lines in this. And, you know, if you rewatch the, the audience reaction suggests a they recognize those lines from somewhere in their own lives. <laughs> and mm -hmm. probably they're a little older <laughs> than maybe Tim's age. Um, 
uh, because some of the, I mean, uh, even the one line about um, you guys have more excuses than Carter has liver pills. I mean, that <laughs> has got to be, you know, a hundred years old. Um, and every time he, he gets it, he delivers it. Mm -hmm. Talk about how hard it was for you guys to keep a straight face during that. Cause you know, what's coming. Yeah. So. <laughs> and you have a history with that, Nikki. <laughs> I was going to lead with that. <laughs> As you know, it can be relatively hard for me to keep a straight face, um, especially when there's another actor um, that either is delivering a comedic line or is ad libbing, as one might do while on stage in front of an audience. Um, <laughs> I. You, for, for me personally, just as an actor, I kind of know their next line so I can relatively find out where I am in that space and try to not listen as much or get as, or as committed to it because I, I know it's going to come and I know that we have to go on and if I lose it, I'm the only one to control it if I say my line is the next one to get it back. So there was... I can't remember which line it was, but it was something that Chris said. Again, he had all the funny lines. And for a minute there, I like lost my place because I was trying to keep from laughing and forgot where I was. But a lot of it is just overly, overly concentrating <laughs> to not screw up. <laughs> We want to fly, be free, and you. You're always trying to hold us down, trap us. <laughs> why do you want to clip our wings? Why do you do this mostly? Not until you tell us why. Why? Why what? You're good parents. There must be some reason for acting out like this. <sighs> you wouldn't understand. We <laughs> might. We're not angry. Or entirely away. <laughs> We just want to know what's going on. It's not one thing, really. We're just constantly stressed and overwhelmed and hungry. All right, so looking back now, there's a line that Paul says towards the end of the, of the piece where he says, if I could go, all you, I think, Nikki, your line is, all you guys have to do is go to school. Mm -hmm. A funny line. And then Paul comes back with, if I could be in high school still, I'd go back in a heartbeat or something like that. Would you? Especially in this day and age. I don't know, man. <laughs> at, at, that's a, there's a nuanced answer to that. I would like to go back probably for a limited time mm -hmm. to experience some things, maybe right some wrongs. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to start over. No. From that point. But there are, you know, there were a lot of highs, a lot of lows. There's some things I would like to experience again, but I wouldn't go back and stay there and like live a different life. You know, at the end of the day, like what this plays about family, at the end of the day, all my decisions resulted in my son and my daughter. So there's no going back that I would do anything to change that. Ditto. <laughs> I mean, as, <laughs> as I think about it, I feel the same as Paul. I mean, if I were to go back, I mean, I like you said, right some wrongs, maybe revisit a couple of things, maybe made a couple of different choices. And I'm not saying anything like existential. I'm just saying, even when it comes to acting, may have maybe um, did that a little bit more in high school instead of you know pursuing other you know activities um, for my own personal reasons, you know things of that nature. But I mean, as long as I'm going back to high school in the '90s when I was cool, <laughs> and not having to go back to high school now where I'm clearly uncool. I would definitely uh, take a visit, take a peek around. <laughs> One more thing. Let me have your phones. Do what you're told, or I'll make you walk down to the river until you're half woods. I swear that's punishment enough. <laughs> Now we know who you are. 24-7? Wait, so you're tracking us now? 
You've got to be kidding. That's a violation of our privacy. You can't do this. That's funny. You just did. Tom, this is so unfair. Fair? You want fair? Fair is where you go to take the cows and hogs and get blue ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> And Tim, as director, you've, you've got to kind of strike a balance here because you have in Nikki and Paul two experienced actors. You know, they've been doing this for, you know, 10 years or more in some cases um, against Chris, who, while he's been in some things, he's, he's still, uh, uh, you know, relatively new to it. And, and um, Gloria, Gloria, right, Gloria? Um, playing Tess, and uh, she's 14, 15? Maybe 15, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so you've got this balance of experienced versus inexperienced and, you know, trying to keep the kids on point and trying to keep the adults um, professional uh, during all this kind of mayhem and chaos. How, how in under 10 minutes did you get that done? <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting because um, I think I'm going to start by sounding like I'm slightly insulting uh, my, my adults here, but um, like I hadn't worked with Nikki a ton, you know, besides a few PCM shows, I hadn't seen her or anything else. I worked with Paul, but I also knew Paul was, was like relatively new when he started. So I, I sort of sometimes saw them as, if not less experienced, as just like, I just didn't know, I hadn't experienced enough with them and, and you know, but then, yeah, to see them, to see them versus the kids, and now I'm going to sort of put down the kids a little bit. Like you said, they're younger, they're, they're, they're starting out. I've actually worked and like taught both of them. Um, I've, I've taught Chris for many years and I've, I've taught Gloria a little bit too. Um, but, you know, it's just that thing of like, like, being an adult, you know, you do have, like Paul said, he is, they're very, very immature, but there's a lot that just sort of comes with, I think, acting experience and then also adult experience that, you know, Nikki and Paul really brought to it. And I think was, was a, they were good role models to Gloria and Chris to be like, okay, this is how to, you know, like, like Nikki would crack up, but eventually kind of set herself down. When Chris would start losing it, it would take him a while to like get back to center. Um, so I think in a way, like, you know, seeing, seeing that I think helped them. Um, and and it, it did make me realize like, you know, it's like, like, damn, Paul, like Paul, you know, he's like, he's improved so much over the years. And like, and it's, it's like so, so, so solid and like, and, and, and at a great level right now and everything. And he's really, you know, like he's really in his element, and then Nikki, even like just the audition. This is being recorded, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes. Right. For posterity's right. sake. Yes. Good night, everyone. I want to go out on a positive note. <laughs> Paul, Paul sh I believe he's about to compliment me. Go on, Tim. And Nikki is <laughs> no. <laughs> Nikki's audition was was so good, um, and I remember she jokingly was like 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 was like I don't want to be cast as the mom, or whatever you know, uh, and but I was like I just. I, like I just couldn't, you know. I just felt like she was the best choice, and and it was also similarly not quite to answer your question, Ken, but it's that thing where, again, having worked with Nikki and Paul like as as fellow actors, and also like having, you know, seen them in separate shows, it, you don't quite know if they're gonna, you know, if two actors are gonna gel together. 
but I, you know, I, I was hopeful. And I, I remember, I think you kind of agreed with me that those were, those were like two really good choices for the roles and that connection and everything. And I think it worked out so well, like you guys worked so well together and stuff. And then, and even Chris and Gloria, like it really felt like a family.